probably used to see the ads for Shen Yun everywhere. Yes, these flyers are more common in major American cities than Raid Shadow Legend ads are on YouTube. See, what if I told you that Shen Yun wasn't just some cultural performance, and that it was actually the marketing arm of a Chinese cult with 100 million members? They're a performing arts cult, you know, like UCB or the Muppets. But given the press that's gotten, you may have already known that. So then, what if I told you Falun Gong might not be a cult at all, but maybe a hippy-dippy religious movement of old people exercising at the park? But then, what if I told you that the Communist Party of China has been caught by an international tribunal literally harvesting the organs of tens of thousands of Falun Gong members? But then, what if I told you that all that information I just told you is suspect, because Falun Gong operates one of the most elaborate propaganda machines in modern history. They're the creators of the Epoch Times, essentially creating the QAnon narrative and spending north of $2 million on Facebook ads supporting Donald Trump. Along with loads of smaller propaganda sources they claim to have nothing to do with, this massive machine is maybe only rivaled by the Communist Party of China themselves. I've been losing my mind over here researching Falun Gong. There's so much information and misinformation and propaganda that it's hard to figure out which way is the truth. What I'm going to do here is lay out all the information the best I can and let you smart internet people form your own opinions. So if you'll indulge me going full Pepe Silvia, I'd like to take you down a rabbit hole of persecution, propaganda, human rights atrocities, and most importantly, the art of dance. I mean, look, I'll admit, I don't know much about China, so I figured if I'm going to make this video, I should reach out to a fellow comedian buddy of mine who was born and raised in China, the very funny, one of a kind, Feng Chao. To be honest, Kyle, I first of all, I don't live to live. Second of all, I don't give a fuck. Third of all, ask me again, I still don't give a fuck. Ask me again, I still don't give a fuck. He's the most level-headed Chinese person I know, so I figured he'd be perfect for the video. So the first thing you're probably wondering is what exactly is Falun Gong? You've probably seen Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa practitioners exercising in parks. If you've ever seen old people in parks doing this, they're not Mr. Miyagi, they're in a cult. Much like slap bracelets in Columbine High School, Falun Gong became well known in the 1990s. The foundation of Falun Gong is a system of meditation, breathing, and exercise called Qigong, which dates back over 4,000 years. And their core tenets are truth, compassion, and forbearance. By the late 90s, Falun Gong had spread across China by word of mouth so fast, it had 70 million members. The Communist Party of China saw this as a threat to their power and made Falun Gong illegal, arresting Falun Gong practitioners and sentencing them to prison. The CCP apparently ran anti-Falun Gong content played daily on every channel, including on children's programming. So this is really when the persecution started. An international tribunal found plenty of evidence of massive numbers of organs being stolen from prisoners, especially Falun Gong members. Registered uh, donor is 1.8 million. It is 0.0014% of the population registered for the organ donation. And despite those low numbers, supposedly China was doing some of the most transplants in the world. And wouldn't you know it, my buddy Fang wasn't surprised. You can't really tell China what to do or what not to do. It's China's country, it's China's land. What do you mean? I'm just taking a couple of livers. You caught me, okay. So what, it's my liver. No problem. Mind your own business. My name is China already. What the fuck don't you understand? It's my people. Are they Chinese people? <laughs> Are they Chinese livers? Are they made in China? Get back to work. The tribunal also added that some forced organ harvesting was being performed while victims were still alive, killing the person in the process. Price, when it cut through, blood still come out. That's it to say, blood still running. That means this person's still alive. So since its members are subject to this treatment, trying to stop the Communist Party of China is the dream of Falun Gong. Once again, what a dream. <laughs> I thought we were crazy to be a comedian in this goddamn city of angels. But a girl can only dream, right? 
Now, due to global pressure, before the Beijing Olympic Games, China claimed to have outlawed all foreign transplants. However, several of their hospitals have still been cleared to operate. And honestly, as I even say this into the microphone, I'm not sure if that's just propaganda that I've heard or not. The Tribunal's YouTube channel posted this video. That's where I'm getting the information. It's the most viewed video on their page. It's a documentary where three men go undercover trying to get a transplant in China. I did have to do a quick Google search to make sure that wasn't the plot of The Hangover 2. They uncover it being talked about pretty blatantly. When this doctor tells the documentarians it's going to take two weeks, still a very, very short time to find an organ, they ask if there's any other options, and she provides them with a rush option upcharge. Like this is fucking Postmates. <laughs> So if you listen to all that and ask, well, then why do you feel conflicted, Kyle? Clearly Falun Gong are victims of a borderline genocide. Well, I'd like to believe them. I'd like to believe that documentary. I'd like to believe the tribunal. I'd like to believe all of it. But almost all this information is exactly Falun Gong's narrative, a narrative that they back up with their dangerous media outlets. If they were just making their own news, that would be one thing, but they fake entire journalistic outlets. Hello, all you freedom-loving people. Welcome to another episode of Front Page. I am your host, Scott Cameron Goulet. Doesn't this guy remind you of a vampire who hasn't fed in weeks? Take the YouTube channel China Uncensored, for instance. Now, this other great YouTuber, Nathan Rich, or as he's known, the Hot Pot King. That's a cool name. I'm just the Pot King. Smoke weed every day. But the Hot Pot King made an incredible video exposing how China Uncensored is 100% created by Noonting Dynasty Television, a media company owned by Falun Gong, despite China Uncensored always claiming to be completely independent. While some people have suggested we're funded by the CIA or Falun Gong, we're not. You're not Falun Gong. And clearly you're a truthful person. I mean, just check out that background you've got there. A yellow item rotating on a blue square. White patterns scrolling in boxes. And these three squares. Let's adjust sharpness, saturation, and zoom. On the right, we have a red shape with a blue background. In the center, a yellow shape with a blue background. On the left, a smaller red shape, which alternates to a green shape. Let's see where these graphics came from. That's right. Even as Chris Chappell is telling you to your face that Falun Gong NTD is not behind his message, they are literally right behind him. The spinning yellow shape in blue, Falun Gong garbage. The white patterns moving around are copies of the globe of a Falun Gong set. I highly recommend checking out his full video, and I'll link it in the description. Suddenly after the election, a huge network of false information YouTube channels were launched. All of these YouTube outlets are operated by, you guessed it, Epoch Times, which means our buddies over at Da Gong. Now these channels have been going hard in the paint, spreading fake information, and they're all pretty much just making videos parroting all the same bullshit points we've heard about election fraud. In this video released by Epoch Times, to try and make it seem awful to live in China, they accidentally stumbled on the ultimate banger for anyone who rents an apartment. <laughs> But these channels that launched right after the election, some of them already have 400,000 subscribers. 
Jesus Christ, I'm in the I'm on the wrong side, huh? But this just goes to show you that Falun Gong's misinformation network is not only major and mainstream, but also so grassroots it's insane. In fact, to populate all their fake Facebook groups, they've even gone as far as to steal celebrities' pictures and use them while making Facebook accounts. But then they graduated to AI-generated faces, which led to some like this. Just really good work, guys. That's that's exactly what a person looks like. You guys did it. Good. I think we go home for the day i see both sides don't fucking take other people's liver and don't fucking lie it just but why do you need to fucking create a fake account you can just tell me well fang that's a great question because anything they do is in the pursuit of great justice horrible atrocities are being carried out and they're the only people who can or will stop them so they don't mind pumping out countless fake QAnon stories or bankrolling two million dollars in campaign ads it's all for the greater good of bringing down China, at least in their eyes. And boy, do they pump it out, because the Epoch Times, or the Epic Times, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, neither do they. The Epoch Times. The Epoch Times. The Epoch Times. The Epoch Times. Well, whoever they are, their fake news stories are dangerous. We were just attacked. That's right, about 4 a.m., the printing press of our Hong Kong edition was visited by four masked men who are likely Chinese communists, and they came in with batons, flammable liquid and tinder. They poured the liquid on the ground, lit some newspapers, set the press on fire, and then ran off into the night. The entire thing was captured on video surveillance. So don't let communists win. Just click that button below. Basically creating the QAnon narrative and undoubtedly leading to shit like the Capitol being stormed doesn't matter to them. Nothing matters to them on the road to bringing down China. But the guy leading them down that road is a man they refer to as their master. My sincerest gratitude. Thank you, master. 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 Wish, Wish master, master happy birthday. Wish master happy birthday. Who looked like that? Thank you, master. Thank you. What the fuck? Just give me a gift card from Lo Red Lobster. In the early 90s, the rapidly growing Qigong movement needed a face. Enter spiritual leader and bloated body found floating in a lake, Li Hongji. A young charismatic teacher, Li was quickly successful at turning huge crowds into loyal and devoted followers. By pairing the Qigong exercises with a strict conservative moral code, he coined the three tenets of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance almost right away which you'll notice a lot once you start diving deep into the propaganda machine. Yes, they love their fun little branded catchphrase as it pops up in Epoch Times. Because our founders believed in truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance, the principles of the spiritual practice Falun Gong. Here printed on a banner in Shenyun, or even on good old China Uncensored, who they still claim to not operate. Whereas Qigong usually is just about doing exercises to keep fit and healthy, Fong Gong goes beyond that and requires its practitioners to live their lives based on three dangerous, subversive principles. Truth, compassion, and tolerance. Yo, fuck this guy. Hey, Chris Chappell, why do you look like Randall from Monsters, Inc.? All this footage of Lee is older, but that's because Lee hasn't left the Dragon Springs New York compound in almost a decade. And much like everything else in this story, there's a deeper level of weird shit. Namely, the things Lee would like you to believe. Master Lee's promises reach into the supernatural. Followers will see through walls. People who practice his beliefs will develop a third eye. Practitioners will fly. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can totally levitate, but so can my girlfriend, but she goes to another school in Canada. Yeah, I can fly. <laughs> levitate my ass, you fucking liar. The fuck? They also believe some really weird racist UFO shit. The leader of Falun Gong claims that um, race mixing in humans is part of an alien plot to drive humanity further from the gods. But I think most people doing exercises in the park are unaware of any of this. 
and the people doing fucking exercises in the park don't deserve to have their organs harvested by the government. Did you forget about the organ harvesting? Cause I did, and apparently so did the rest of the world. In fact, to Falun Gong's credit, I struggle to even call them a cult, really, since cult is the official word that the Communist Party of China wants people to use for them. It just feels like even more propaganda to call them a cult, but then again... In fact, the only thing that really makes them feel like a cult is their master. They don't have a lot of the mainstays you see in many, many cults. They don't have you detach from your family. They don't have you quit your job. They don't have any shady dark sex rings. They aren't fucking kids. So as giant cults go, they at least seem a lot less dangerous than other cults, I suppose. But don't you think they're a fucking racist? Yeah, I mean, they're fucking mean, racist. Who the fuck are you to categorize people? Something is really iffy in there. If you, yeah. For sure. Look, they're racist, they say weird shit about aliens, they hang out at the park, and they post about QAnon. That doesn't make them a cult, it just makes them your Uncle Gary. Is all this weird shit they do terrible? Yes. Does Epoch News make me want to rip my own skin off? Absolutely. Do they deserve to be murdered by their government and sold for parts like a stolen Ford Fiesta? Hot take. No. But where it does get a bit sweaty for Falun Gong is the health benefits, and the dangers of the peer pressure within the organization to leave behind Western medicine, doctors, and hospitals. And if they are withholding medical attention from people who need it, then they need to be fucking stopped. Hey, Falun Gong, stop being weird and shady and racist and shit and spreading all these lies and destroying our country. It's shitty and you need to fucking stop it. But hey, China, stop taking fucking organs that aren't yours. But it's just so hard to see where any truth starts or ends. I've been researching this video for almost two weeks because every single detail you could go back and forth on. Take this for example. Earlier in the video I mentioned that the cult had 70 million members back in the 90s. It had 70 million members. Wow, good times. Well, that 70 million number might be a lie. However, both the Communist Party of China and Falun Gong agree on the number, but US officials put the number much closer to two to four million. When you were a kid, do you think 70 million people were doing this? I was in school trying to kiss more girls. <laughs> so why would they both agree on the lie? Well, because it benefits them both. Falun Gong gets to have 70 million members, which shows how strong they were and how many members are being persecuted. China benefits because they get to say this cult had 70 million members. It was almost unstoppable and we had to snuff it out. So really, who the fuck knows? And I've been watching so much propaganda that I'm not even sure if the doc I mentioned earlier posted by the tribunal to their YouTube is even real because it's so over the top. This set is so weird. It looks like a haunted house with the lights turned on. Why does this documentary take place in Mitch McConnell's foyer? Although I do love the bust of Weird Al Yankovic. I, I feel it does tie the room together. So speaking to where the truth begins and ends, a lot of Falun Gong's findings are backed up by Amnesty International. Now you've probably heard of them, and it seems like they sometimes do some good work. However, dating back to the 60s, Amnesty International has had a heavy connection with the CIA and other global intelligence groups. Amnesty International has a bit of a spotty history, including having a workplace so toxic with bullying, racism, and sexism that two of their employees committed suicide and named the job in their suicide notes, which is not great for, you know a human rights group. And back in 2019, when a group of Kurdish activists, some of which were on an indefinite hunger strike, peacefully occupied their building in London. These protesters were denied access to toilets, despite that, you know, being a being a basic human right. But don't worry, Amnesty International made it up to them by calling the police and having all of them arrested. I mean, this dude basically told them to go take a shit at the park. I don't know if there are any public toilets in the in the area. There are a number of restaurants and, We're and requesting pubs. very soon. There is a there is a park just further down from here, which I, but I don't know if there are any facilities mm -hmm. there. So while they might occasionally find themselves doing some good work, they don't seem to be against a little opportunistic manipulation of the human rights movement as a treat. <laughs> 
But maybe the worst example of this is the Nayara testimony from the 1990s. When the United States government was deciding on whether or not to invade Iraq, a Kuwaiti woman, known to Congress by only her first name, Nayara, told Congress that when Iraq invaded Kuwait, she stayed behind as a volunteer at the local hospital, where she witnessed Iraqi soldiers steal the incubators with children in them and leave them freezing to death. Amnesty International, which had human rights investigators in Kuwait, confirmed the story and helped spread it. The organization also inflated the number of children who were killed by the robbery to over 300, more than the number of incubators available in the entire city, let alone one hospital. This testimony is cited by many members of Congress as the chief reason they voted to approve the Gulf War. So this is a great example of Amnesty International being used as a pawn to start wars, a great example of them inflating their numbers, and a great example of them lying about their sources on the ground. Because after the Gulf War, it was found that the woman was lying, the story was made up, and her last name was not given because her father was actually a delegate from Kuwait's government who is at the same congressional hearing. But this is who Falun Gong has verifying the vast majority of their claims. But am I really qualified to sit here and lecture you about human rights groups? I'm just an overweight comedian who can't even get cast as the fat dude in Cobra Kai. And even the information that China does let get out doesn't make them look great. Like, for instance, when you do get arrested as a Falun Gong member, at best, you end up in one of these deprogramming centers. Hey, China, this is some pretty culty shit too, huh? But like I said, you can go back and forth on anything here. In fact, people have called into question the legitimacy of the doctor I mentioned earlier, the main whistleblower. And he even had this tweet, as weirdly phrased as it is, that kind of says it's a hoax. But that was one tweet, and the fact that he's left it up and continues on his cause makes me wonder if this is less of a smoking gun and more of maybe a weird mistranslation or misunderstood phrasing. I don't know. There's even claims that Falun Gong bodies are the actual bodies in the popular bodies exhibit. Jesus, how many times can I say bodies? But yeah, if you remember that exhibit that kind of toured around the country, I I'm from Vegas. I remember it being in the casinos for a long time, but people claim that those are the corpses of Falun Gong practitioners. So they just want to have this weird cult and there's money behind and then like, where the fuck do you get the money? What the mm -hmm. fuck do you mean? You your, your organs are harvested. I don't give a fuck. I gotta go eat fucking Dairy Queen. It's true, and that's a good point, Fang. The Falun Gong propaganda machine has to be expensive. I understand where the Communist Party of China's money comes from. They're, you know, evil and shit. But where does Falun Gong get the money to pay for all this shit? The video teams for all these outlets cannot be cheap. Shen Yun itself has super high production value, and getting in means attending this eight-story performing arts school they had built on their giant compound in New York. This does not look like a cheap rinky-dink operation. And by the way, if you become a dancer of Shen Yun, it's one of the few ways to get into heaven if you're still mixed race, as all Shen Yun dancers are guaranteed spots in heaven. Shen Yun, they claim, along with the money they make off Epoch's time subscriptions, is their main source of income. I just have a hard time believing these ballet recitals, as grand as they are, not only make all their money on advertising back and make a profit, but also force people to go out and buy these Falun Gong books. Like, who the fuck's gonna buy your book? I guess they sell them after the ballet recitals, you know? <laughs> you gotta have merch. They know how to move merch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, because of their ties to Amnesty International, many people claim that Falun Gong is funded by the CIA. It wouldn't be outside the CIA's wheelhouse to fund a group that undermines another global superpower. It's kind of their thing. But ending this video with the CIA did it just kind of feels like a cop-out, doesn't it? The CIA did it feels like the equivalent of finding out it's a dream at the end of Super Mario 2. Who cares? And you know what? Since there's no Shen Yun this year, I went ahead and hired my own dancer. I don't know. Give a little levity to all the heavy shit I just said. And unlike Shen Yun, I actually paid my dancer. So just sit back and enjoy the majesty that is Kai Yun 2021. <laughs> Yen